Welcome back to our design studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this gorgeous centerpiece really representing a city skyline. So the inspiration for today's video is the city that I live in, Chicago. I think we have the best skyline out there. Some of you will send me messages saying yours is better, whatever, believe what you want. I believe because I live here that our skyline is the jewel of the Midwest. When you fly in, you see it, it's gorgeous. When you drive any direction at the city, you see it. It just looks like the crown jewel. So that is where the inspiration is for today's design. So we are gonna be using some different size PVC to create a skyline centerpiece. This tool here is fabulous. We use PVC for many different structures and it's a simple husky tool. And what it does is it gives you a great cut on it. So you just ratchet it, put this into whatever you want and really no pressure. And it cuts a perfectly smooth, even space. So definitely if you're gonna use PVC, you need to have one of these. They have a lot of different ones on the market. This is actually the least expensive one and it works perfectly. So I've already pre-cut some pieces to create a skyline. And what you're going to do is take your Oasis adhesive strips. I cut them lengthwise to start. And then you just line up how you want to start it. So we'll take this piece. Run it down. Pull the tab. And just attach it on. And you're going to keep going with this to create pretty much whatever the skyline in your mind works. It's pretty architectural and it'll hold stems perfectly. I use the bigger piece of PVC because it'll hold a water tube in case I have a delicate flower that needs a water source at all times. That way you can put a water tube in there and you are good to go. And just give yourself some dimension you don't want it to be completely straight across. Cities, the inspiration for it is not just one straight line. There's groupings. And I try to put the adhesive on the writing so that way that's covered up in the painting portion. And then for the little guys, I just cut a half and then another section. And you see how it's kind of taking shape a little bit. So you kind of keep going along there to create your design. Let's put a bigger one on. So that is how you get started with the PVC. And it's an inexpensive, but it's a statement piece once you finish it. Then what you could do is you could turn it over and just put a little bit of glue at the base to seal it off so your stems won't go through. So what I would do is I would glue the bases and you probably need a couple of coatings like so. And then I would set it right on to one of the silt mats so that way it will dry completely flat and you could just pull it up and it'll be dry. Once that is done, once your creation is done, you're gonna wanna hit it 
with some Rust-Oleum primer. It's going to need about two to three coats. What will happen, the first one I noticed is the red writing um, drips a little bit. Something in that kind of just liquefies it. So the red writing will come off and then a second coat will just kind of cover it beautifully. And I actually liked the way it looked. So I just went over and again, you guys know it's one of my favorite things ever, the Rust-Oleum Pearl Mist. I just kind of went over the whole thing to give you just a glistening of it. So that's how you do the start. Let me grab the finished one to show you guys. So this is the finished project. Once you've combined them, cut them, glued them, again, I just used the primer to go over it once and then I used that mist, that pearl mist to just touch it again. But it does reflect what in my mind the city looks like from afar. You got the different heights. I just think it's a beautiful creation. So we are gonna add some floral to it. And I have some purple stock that we're gonna add in. And I did take off the foliage because I really just want to see the beauty of the structure itself with some of the floral added in. The goal is not to cover this completely, it's just to enhance it. Then we have this gorgeous coxcomb, it's such a beautiful color. And let's pop off some of this foliage. I could see this at a corporate client's office for a weekly floral display that you could go in and just replace the flowers in. Executive's desk. There's so many options for something like this. And it's easy and not very cost prohibitive. Now we'll go in with some beautiful roses. Of course, if you were doing this for a weekly, you would have to have water source for everything. And if you glue the bottoms of the tubes like I was showing you, you could almost fill these up. Make sure you glue it really well, and you could actually fill these up with water, and it becomes its own little bud vase. Cut this down a little bit more. Next, we're gonna add some of these gorgeous orange zinnias. Stunning. Again, if you wanted to use a water tube, I just want to show you, it fits right down in there. If you don't want to glue the bottom, you could just use some water tubes. The colors really make this pop with the neutral of the vessel. And then you have these gorgeous colors just popping out a uh, And I can't see it from the front, I'm trying to. So I hope it's looking as good as in my mind it is. I guess we'll see when it's done. And then we have some Crispidia that we're gonna pop in there. I think it's very architectural, love it. And these can kind of go pretty much anywhere just gives you that pop of golden yellow that fits so perfectly with this color palette. Sorry. 
And next, I wanted to add some blue, but I thought this would be a little bit harsh. Delphinium would be a little bit too tall and flowery. So I had this beautiful moss that just put a little piece of this into the vessels just to add some of that great blue color. And this is the Bella moss, and I just, I love this moss. And this just gives you a little bit of our blue color throughout. And now I want to add some of our ferns. And these I'm going to strip pretty much all of the bottom off. I really want them to be just standing out there. And you can go ahead and put these in some of the vessels that already have flowers. And this just gives a little bit of movement in the front and the top of it. So you can never have too much of this, I don't think. And if you keep the foliage above the floral, you're still getting to see the floral. You're just getting a little topping of our crown jewel with the foliage. I always go for the tallest ones. shorter ones out. So there we have it, my take on our landscape, our cityscape. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I will look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Have a great day.